In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we celebrate our Mass today, especially for the soul of Pamela Aleka. And we come together now on this autumn morning to do the most important thing we'll do all weekend. Celebrate these sacred mysteries of God's love in our Mass. And as always, first, we pause and call to mind that we're sinners. We need the Lord. We don't always trust God completely as we could. And we place ourselves in God's hands, asking for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you give us hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you strengthen us with faith. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you prepare us for your return. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds that is coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be wor- we may worthily possess the heavenly kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we are mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you, For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make make us us turn turn to you. Let Let us see see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, Lord, make make us us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. 
Lord, make us, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. And by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel. An elderly woman named Maud had a window seat on a large 747 jetliner that had just taken off for Rome. And she had been scrimping for years to fulfill her dream of traveling to Europe to visit the exotic places she's read about all her life. But it was her first flight, and she was terrified. Oh Lord, what am I going to do here? She kept repeating this to herself. Even the stately presence of the four bishops seated behind her, well, it didn't really help. With fear and trembling, she finally opened her eyes and peeped out of the window, just in time to see one of the plane's four engines break loose from the wing and disappear into the clouds below. Maud was panic-stricken. We're going to die! We're going to die, she cried out. The 
chief flight attendant immediately consulted with the pilot and then announced to the passengers that everything was under control. The captain assures you, she says, that he can fly the airplane back to New York and land safely on three engines. But poor, panic-stricken Maud, she continued to cry out, we're going to die, we're going to die. The flight attendant came over to her and said, don't worry, my dear, God is with us. We have only three engines, but look, we have four bishops. To which Maud replied, I'd rather have four engines and three bishops. <laughs> our Lord has told us in today's gospel passage that we do not know when our time will come. And in our story, Maud was certain that hers had arrived quite unexpectedly right then and there on that plane. Because we do not know, and as our Lord has advised us today, we need to be ready. Now, as you can tell by the different color of our vestments, that we've entered a new season of the church's liturgical calendar. And in fact, today is not only the first Sunday of Advent, but also the first day of our new church year. And until the end of the liturgical year, that happens on the Feast of Christ the King, next year, we'll primarily be hearing passages from the Gospel of Mark, or year B, if you like. But I have a question for you today. What is the purpose of Advent? Now, I'm sure all of you would answer this question by saying that it's the season in the church year when, which leads up to Christmas. So, in order for us to better understand Advent, I think we should maybe understand the origins of Christmas, which was not celebrated by Christians until the fourth century. Now, the pagans of that time, they saw the world as a great cosmic struggle between the powers of darkness and the powers of light. And they noticed that at different times, darkness seemed to be getting more of the light, so to speak. They were watching, if you will, two great cosmic wrestlers at this time of year. And it appeared the wrestler called darkness would seem to be getting the upper hand because the days, well, they were getting shorter, at least until December 21st, which is when they noticed that the tables were beginning to turn and that the sun was regaining its strength. And so when they saw this happening on an annual basis, the pagans celebrated what they called the resurrection, or the return of the light of the sun. It was a sun feast, if you will, marking the transition time from darkness into light. Now when the Christians came along, they took over this pagan notion. They said, hey, it's a pretty good idea that you've got here. And after all, we know that you're really talking about darkness and light. And the only real darknesses of the world are the darkness of sin and the darkness of death. And the only light in the world is Jesus. So we'll keep your ideas. But what the Christians did, they took the word sun and they took out the middle letter U and they changed it to an O. So the sun they were talking about was Jesus, the Son of God. And they made this time of year a celebration when we would get ready for the tables to be turned. So in the great struggle, this was the time when sin and death would now be overcome by the light of the world, Jesus, the Son, S-O-N, of God. And so they called this time Christmas. And they made Advent the time of considering an end of the darkness and looking forward to the coming of light. Our readings today, or Advent, or the coming, if you will, are pointing us to understand them on more than one level. Now, first of all, of course, we're preparing ourselves during what is basically a penitential period to celebrate the coming of Jesus and the manifestation of God among us as a human being. But secondly, we're also being reminded of the reason why Jesus was born among us, well, in the first place. Namely, to be our salvation, our wholeness. And he comes now so that we may be equipped 
and ready to meet him when he comes again at the end of time. And it's this coming which we encounter in today's gospel passage. But I would like to propose to you today, for your consideration, a third coming, which is also of crucial importance. And this is when God enters into our daily life and calls us to follow him and to be with him. God not only came in Jesus at Bethlehem, he not only will come at the end of time to gather us all to himself, but he also comes into our lives at every moment, through every person we meet, every experience that we have. For God in Jesus is Emmanuel. And we know what Emmanuel means, right? God with us, right? God with us. Perfect. The daily coming of Jesus into our lives is that process by which we deepen our understanding of who Jesus was and is and become more and more identified with his vision of God and the meaning of life. With this identification, we're not only ready, but hey, we're eager to meet and to be one with our God. Now, when we keep all these comings, all three of these comings in mind at the same time, we can make our celebration of Christmas more meaningful. It's not a mere remembrance of a past event. No, Christmas only becomes meaningful when we realize what it is saying in terms of our present life, the here and now, and our future life. Today's Gospel, then, is speaking on the level of the future and present comings of Jesus. And the key word for us to keep in mind is the word readiness. Be on guard. Stay awake. Because you never know when the time will come. Our readiness is not for the end, but also for that daily stream of experiences that make up our ordinary day. And we need to remember and be always mindful, Jesus is there. And we shouldn't resist him. We shouldn't fight him. Let him mold you into the likeness, into the likeness of God, to become a person of integrity and truth, a person of love and compassion, a person of freedom and of peace. And finally, good news is we're not in this all by ourselves. Think about it. In our second reading, Paul said, we never stop thanking God for all the graces we have received through Jesus Christ. And there's so many resources that are available to us to grow in a deeply enriched and enriching Christian life in terms of, let's say, little guide books or spiritual directors, other books, many books have been written, videos, retreats, seminars, workshops, sharing groups in our larger community. We need not be without any of the gifts of the Spirit while we are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. And he will keep us steady, all of us steady, and without blame until that last day, that day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So my friends, as we enter Advent, as we go through Advent, as we enrich ourselves, let our prayer be, come, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now, before we stand for our creed, I didn't hear about anyone's birthday. This, do anybody have a birthday this weekend or next week? Ah, happy birthday. Up, oh, happy birthday, Nicole. <laughs> or a wedding anniversary this weekend or next week that we could congratulate? Oh, we're, oh we're, yeah. Wait, how many how many years? Fifty-two, you may kiss the bride. Kind of a COVID kiss.
And now we stand in together as a family, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God for true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us then and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and his Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess among baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And now with confidence in God's care for us, we bring all of our needs before the Lord. For the church, held close by the shepherd of Israel, that all will be open to receiving God's merciful love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are entrusted with positions of leadership, that they may govern with wisdom, prudence, and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, those in nursing homes, and their families, friends, and caregivers, that they know God's healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of our parish community of St. John the Beloved will use this time of preparation for the Lord's coming to be reconciled with others in their families, their neighborhoods, and their workplaces, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of those who have contracted the coronavirus will be healed. That those who have died will be welcomed into the loving arms of their Savior who suffered for them. And that their grieving families will find strength in their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers and those whose names are listed in our parish book of remembrance, may they be blessed with the healing presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in faith, may they rejoice forever in the vision of God's glory. And we pray in a special way at this Eucharist for Pamela Eleka. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we light the first candle on our Advent wreath and bless our wreath. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May this wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the child. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, St. John, who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. This is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, 
For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.